Happy Lord's Day. Easter too. We celebrated our Passover by observing the Lord's Supper this morning. I would like to say, first of all, I'd like to thank the Lord for another day. God has blessed each and every one of us with another day of life, and we should be thankful. It is really amazing how when we are, when you, when you are first born and, and where you're at right now, that we're sitting at this time and space together. But what even makes it more interesting is that I'm standing here before you guys doing this message. I, I wouldn't have never thought I would be doing this. But anyway, I have a message for us today, and I pray that, that everything will turn out to uh, benefit the hearers and doers of God's word. First, and I would like to thank all this technology that we have. It's just amazing. We have people that's on the Zoom program that's uh, in the Filipino, in the Philippines. We have people in Texas. We have people that's in Georgia. We have people that's uh, in Stockton. We have people all just all over this, this world. And, and the technology that we have is just at the right time, at the right, I guess, technology that we have. I would like to thank uh, all of the brothers and sisters that are doing the Bible classes that's on Zoom and uh, taking care of God's word. And I would like to thank, thank the brothers and sisters for making it possible for us to come into this building to uh, worship our God. So, our message today, let us, let's go to this word. Heavenly Father, I humbly appreciate you throne of grace. Thank you for who you are and for what you have done for us in life. You have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We are thankful for your grace, your mercy, your goodness, and your kindness. And most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who was our sacrificial, who he was the sacrificial lamb, who came down to this earth. Pay the price that man's kind to not pay. We realize that today is noted to be Easter and we just pray that as we search the scriptures and look at uh, what the meaning of Easter is, that we can find out and realize that it's all based on your son Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for us. Father, we are thankful for your love and your grace. This is our prayer in Jesus Christ. If you could have one gift that would make your life more rich and joyful, one gift that would help you cope with all the headaches and problems in each of the different situations in your life, what would that gift be? Would you want more money? Better help? Would you want to be younger? Would you want to have power or great intelligence? If you had one single gift that surpassed all understanding, what would that be? Is peace of mind on your list? I know that after dealing with and experiencing 2020, and as we go into 2021, we all need a little peace of mind. Amen. <laughs> the Apostle Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And he says, finally, brothers, Whatever things that are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things that are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, report. If there is any virtue and if there is any praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And then Paul says, the things which you have learned and received and heard from and saw from me, do these, and the peace of God will be with you. Do these things and the peace of God will be with you. Meditate on his word 
God will give you peace in your life. So money has a way of creating worries. Health is so fragile. Youth is temporary and not usually appreciated by those who receive and have youth. Youth are running wild these days. Power corrupts. Great intelligence leads to pride. But peace of mind is precious in every season of life. Every position in society and in every way, peace can be with you. You can touch money, you can count it, and you can exercise power and enjoy the energy of youth. But peace of mind is more difficult to obtain or define. The old Proverbs says that, the old proverb says, peace is not the absence of conflict from life, but the ability to cope or survive with it. We say that again. The old Proverbs define peace as not the absence of conflict from life, but the ability to cope and survive with it, with the peace of mind. The ancient writers and the modern thinkers all search to define and analyze not only what peace of mind is, but more importantly, how to obtain it. The Jews in the Old Testament period took such a high premium on this state that they usually greet people with a special word that's called salam. And this word could mean prosperity, well-being, expressing peace. Peace was usually used as a greeting when you greet someone and when you uh, leave them. Because of their special calling, the Jewish nation came to understand the character and purpose of God through revelation. The, proper, the, the prophets realized that peace of mind was something that came from God. This state of well-being allows a person to weather any storm he faced and any hardship. This is only something that comes from God. You can't purchase it with money. You can't learn it from a book. You can't develop it through practice. It's a gift that surpasses all understanding. Peace of mind is God's peace. The peace that one experiences when one's heart and soul rests with God and do God's will. Isaiah the prophet says, we put it this way, God will keep in perfect peace all those who trust in him. Those thoughts turn often to the Lord. Put your mind on the Lord and focus in on him and he will bring you peace. Isaiah 26 and 3. Peace of mind wasn't something that man ordered to offer to God in order to demonstrate his sincerity or holiness. Peace of mind was something that God offered to man in exchange for man's knowledge and his trust in, all, in, in, in his all-powerful being. Peace of mind is a feeling. It's not, it's not a feeling, it's a feeling of balance, a sense of harmony in our lives between the physical and the spiritual. It's a feeling of quiet assurance, despite what is happening outside in our lives, on the inside of our minds and hearts, calm rest is there. Peace of mind establishes us from freedom from the need to win all the time, or having to perform our act all the time, or feeling guilty or afraid all the time. Peace of mind is a state of well-being that will give us joy within. In the ancient days when the, the castle dwellers, they would build big walls around their city. And they would have the castle in the middle and the, the walls would protect the, the castle dwellers, the people who lived in the in the uh, confines of the wall. But what they would do, they would dig deep wells down in the middle of their, their city. Those wells will supply water. So when their enemies would clog up the aqueducts or the rivers that's coming into the castle, the castle dwellers could survive and wouldn't uh, surrender because they was, uh, didn't have any water supply. So those wells were deep down and it supplied them. Our souls, when we are anchored in the Lord, he gives us that start steady water supplies that give us the, the spiritual water that we need to sustain our life 
So no matter what's going on outside of our lives, on the inside, we get this well of water that only Jesus supplies. Everybody got that? All right, amen. So this gives you peace of mind within. So would give you peace of mind within and it constantly nourishes our soul as the conflict might rage outside of our lives. We can have this peace of God. God is good. So how do I obtain peace of mind? Well, Jesus is the only one that can give you peace of mind. If peace of mind were a thing or a commodity, Jesus would be the only one to give it to you. Give it. John chapter 14, verse 23, 27. 14, 27. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So Jesus promised his disciples that he would send the Holy Spirit who would bring them into knowledge and remembrance of his words. This knowledge and understanding would bring them peace of mind. And in the same way, the Holy Spirit give us peace of mind as we follow Jesus Christ. When you lay down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lay down and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 24 and 26. That sweet, sweet that we can get at nighttime with all the things that's going on outside the world, we can lay down and wake up and know that God has protected us and is with us. So this refers that passage that I just said, that protection of God is something that is a blessing within itself. But he said that when wicked come, when the wicked come, he didn't say that it would not come. When wickedness and the problems come, he will be there for you. We must believe that and we must hold that to our heart. So that brings us security of, of, of uh, peace. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, he says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. To summarize just a little bit of what this Romans chapter 1 says, Paul says in a few words that Christ is our peace. The work that he did on the cross and he abolished the law in his flesh and brought peace with us through, through him. Nobody want to be at war with God. So Jesus, by following his word, we can have peace with him, we can have peace with God. When we have peace, we don't have to be afraid of the moral debt of sin because of this, God offered the forgiveness to us instead of condemning us and sending us to hell through our obedience. When man thinks of God, he's no longer have to dread judgment because he knows in advance that he's okay with God because of Jesus Christ. This knowledge creates a peaceful heart and mind. Amen? Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Another assurance that God would not condemn us to judgment is because we are in Christ. We are Christian. We are His. When we see our weak and sinful nature, the way that we really are, the promise of God brings us peace. It brings us peace. And the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. First John chapter 1, 9. When you messed up for about the 10,000th time, the words of Jesus said that he will forgive you. Don't that bring you peace? Okay. Brings me peace, I know that. So God continues to love and to cherish regardless of our faults and our weaknesses. This creates a peace in us that is beyond understanding. And also this passage and countless other passages tells us that God's absolute power 
love and willingness or eagerness to forgive us, transform us, help us, and he supplies all our needs and eventually we will be resurrected from death after our life is over and we have a place in heaven. Amen. The instruction and guides, this instruction and guides us in living good, we have productive lives, and spirit-filled lives. Money, power, or intelligence can't get us, it can get us many things, but they never can obtain peace of mind. And never obtain peace of mind for it. Peace of mind is created from the knowledge, assurance, instructions, and promises that God gives. And all these things are contained in the Bible. In other words, the peace of God comes into your heart when God of peace is on your mind through his word. God of peace is on your mind through his word. Sum up everything that I've just mentioned. We def des desperately need to be happy and fulfilled in this life. Peace of mind is the, one of the key things in our life that we need. When we have a situation where things happen, the harmony of God and, and our peace is what we experience where God brings us peace. And whatever good or bad happens, our peace is still with us. This peace of mind is only something that God can give and, and men's own efforts can't generate that peace. The, the word of God comes through the revelation of himself and he offers forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ and he promised to care for us and he promised us eternal life. And God does this through the recording of all the all things for, for his word. And all who believe in his word and all who have peace that surpasses all understanding. We had spoke about Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9. It's interesting that uh, we have all uh, this God that take care of all our needs. We have a God that have demonstrated his love for each and every one of us by having us here today to observe his blessing, to be able to worship him in spirit and truth. God's word, it will keep us, it will take care of us. There's a story about this Preacher and his son. I don't know if you guys heard the story, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. Everybody ready for a story? Well, this preacher and his son, they always used to canvass the neighborhood. They used to take out brochures and tracts and hand it out to people and knock on people's doors. They did that every Saturday. But it's one particular Saturday. It was raining. The son got up and he got ready to go out, put his clothes on. And the father said, son, it's raining. Can you do this another day, another time? The son said, no, you got, we need to go out. Let's go out. So the father said, well, it's not today. And the son said, can I go out? Can you go out with the rain hat and the jacket on? Be careful. Don't go step in mud in the puddle. So the son got his tracks. He went out, knocking on doors, knocking on many doors, heading out the house. He came to this one house, and he knocked on the door. Nobody answered, but he could hear somebody on the inside moving around. So he kept on knocking, kept on knocking. And finally, this elderly lady came to the door and said, yes, son, can I help you? And he said, I want to give you this track. Jesus loves you and he will give you peace of mind. The lady took the pastor and said, thank you. So the kid went on to the next house. The next morning was Sunday worship service. His dad was speaking. And as he was speaking, this same elderly lady got up 
And she said, yesterday, I was about to surrender. I was about to take my life. And I heard this knock on the door. And it was this little boy that gave me this tract. And he told me that Jesus loved you and he will give you peace. But see, Jesus works all the time, right on time. And we dare to see his, all of his marvelous works. We too can have that peace in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives. So that's a testimony from that lady, that elderly lady, where it was touched in such a way that only God could touch it. In the efforts through the young man, God's word got distributed, which is beautiful, which is a blessing. So we're here this morning to offer imitation that Jesus offered. He said, if you want peace of mind, you can have peace of mind by following him, following him. What you need to do is believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You also must remember that God did not send his Son Jesus into the world to destroy the world, but through him the world might be saved and the world would have peace. Jesus said, peace be with you. The Bible also says that Jesus, before he went up into heaven, he said, all power and authority has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I will be with you even to the very end of age. That right there is promised that Jesus will be with you. That's promised that Jesus will take care of you. That's promised that you can be with him eternally. He also says that in Mark chapter 16 and 16, he that believeth and is baptized should be saved, but he that believeth not should be condemned. On the day of Pentecost, when the apostles talked to the Jewish nation, when they celebrate the Passover, they was listening to the message and they said, then, and brother, what should we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit helped guide us in our life. And that little person on your shoulder talking and say, okay, Dad, do this. This is this what I would say, don't do that. You, you get some bad results. And love you, know, you try to talk to yourself. But then the Spirit intervenes in your mind and your heart to keep you from going the other way. If you're not a member of God's church, then you can be one by confessing Jesus and obeying his word, and then you can be baptized. And then you would have to live faithful unto death, and God would be with you. He would bring you peace. There might be someone in this audience that might fit that description. If you need some more information about what we, I had mentioned to you this morning, you can get more information and we can baptize you. But if there's someone in this audience that don't have the peace that we are lost. We all are bothered in some kind of fashion. Or even doing this lesson was kind of tough because I had to examine, had to look, and I had to. <laughs> so, but I, I feel the peace and the calm. You know, I'm up here. <laughs> For peace. God gives us peace and He gives us rest. My encouragement to you is to hold on to God and change your hand and follow His instructions. Be he would be there for you. Whatever your need is or whatever your concern is, you can make it known to us and we can cater to your needs. Because together we stand and sing the invitation song. <laughs>